God like that. And he's not loving enough. I am much more loving than that God. I am much more just than that God. What are you really saying? The devil's got a hold of you. I'm warning you. You're saying your standard of justice and your love is far superior to God's standard of justice and His love. Therefore, I'm not going to worship Him anymore. I'll worship somebody who has a better standard of justice and love. It just happens to be... <laughs> moi! The sheep. Isn't that incredible what the devil does? Makes you turn against. Now, we're supposed to follow the Good Shepherd, and the Good Shepherd... He can go through suffering, and this is fascinating in 1 Peter, and it says why. When he was abused, he didn't return abuse. And when he suffered, he did not threaten. But instead he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. Jesus Christ didn't say to the Father as he's hanging upon the cross, this cross thing sticks. I think I want to be God. Forget about you. He didn't say when they're spitting on him and all that. Hey, your sense of justice is rotten. And this, how can you love me if you're going to let me die on this cross? Which is amazing, once again, all these modern theologians running around saying, God can't be a God of love if he let his son die on the cross. <laughs> this is craziness, people. It's crazy sheep. We are to follow if you want to get to the green pastures and the still waters, you've got to follow the Good Shepherd. And the Good Shepherd says is that the route through that is through suffering. Don't turn on me. Trust me. There's one more big part of this. Psalm 23. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not going to be upset. I'm not going to fear evil. Because what? <coughs> Your rod... And your staff comfort me, and you are with me. So the Good Shepherd says, I'm not going to send you out there by yourself. I'm going to be with you through everything that you go. If you do deny yourself, if you do take up your cross, if you do follow me, I will be with you. And what's more is, I will have my staff and my rod. Two purposes. Shepherd's staff has a big hook on the end of it. And it's great to long if you actually see a modern day shepherd's staff, the thing's about 15 feet long, it has a wire hook on the end of it, and sheep love to go astray. When they do, takes that old hook out there, grabs that back leg, pulls them back in. Do the sheep like that? No. Does it save their life? Yes. Have you ever had God reach out and grab a hold of your leg? and pull you in. doesn't feel very good. But it might have saved your life. It might have saved your soul. Second thing he has is staff rod. Big club. What's that for? For the bad guys coming around. So when the evil one does come around, or when you are in the presence of your enemies, you trust in God. Why can Jesus hang upon the cross and say, Father, forgive them, when they're spitting at him and calling him names. It's because he trusts in a God who judges justly. He trusts in the rod and the staff of his Father. We don't do that naturally as sheep. We don't trust his rod and staff. We think we can do a better job of it, which is insane for sheep, because we taste too good, and we don't have big teeth, and we're not fast, and we're not smart. Trust in He who judges justly and trust in Him. That's why the last line of 1 Peter 2 says, For we were going astray like sheep. That's what we do. Going astray. But now we have been returned to the shepherd, and here's the key word, the guardian of our souls. What do we got going for us? Two things. Good ears, and we follow. If we hear His voice, and follow Him, He's going to keep us on the straight and narrow. He's going to lead us in the right path. The other path is very wide. And unfortunately, I've just been reading Revelation chapter 20. Guess where the other path leads? There's really only two paths, which is another lie that you're going to be told. There's a million paths, and they're all the green pastures, and strawberry fields everywhere. 
The scriptures I read say two paths. Straight and narrow, <coughs> following the good shepherd. I am the gate. Me alone. I am the way. And the way is narrow. Follow me and I'll get you there. Your sheep, follow me. I give you the ability to do it. You can do it. The other way is wide. Guess where it leads? Chapter 20, Revelation. The lake of fire. That sounds like fun. <laughs> okay. Very good. We're to follow Jesus Christ. I don't want to just say, follow Jesus Christ, end of sermon, let's go home. It's too vague. There's some beautiful examples of what it means to follow Jesus Christ and how your life should line up with His. And it's right here in 1 Peter. How your life should line up with His to know whether or not you're being a good sheep. How do you know if you're on the straight and narrow? Or how do you know if you're on the wide path that leads to the lake of fire? Well, there's a couple criteria that are very simple. I got this list from John Newton. John Newton of uh, Amazing Grace fame, uh, preacher um, during the period of the American Revolution, spiritual director for William Wilberforce, uh, a great man, and he came up with a simple list in a letter. Somebody wrote him a letter and said, how do I know if I'm on the right path? How do I know if I'm being a good sheep? And he said, here it is, five criteria. First one, humility. Are you humble? <coughs> do you have a broken and contrite heart? Somebody who's on the right path is not filled with a lot of arrogance and a lot of pride and is not raising their fist at God and saying, you're not loving enough. They have looked themselves in the heart and seen a heart that is filled with sin. And they are broken. They have gone their own way and sought their own pleasure and ended up in the pigsty and finally came to themselves and said, a servant in my father's house is better off than I am right now. They are broken enough to be humble. Humility is one of the first signs of a sheep that is on the right path. Second, they are guileless. They do not speak deceit. Their lives are open and undisguised. What they say is what they do. Third, they are forgiving. Sheep who know what it cost the Son of God so that they could be forgiven. If God can do that to us while we are yet His enemies, how much more then can we do that to our children and our spouses and our friends? Sheep on the right path do not seek revenge because they trust in Him who judges justly. They are forgiving. Number four, sheep on the right path are selfless. That doesn't come natural to us. Generosity does not come natural to us. But a sheep who's been led into green pastures and still waters knows what they've been given and is thankful. They have a thankful heart and they are filled with such thanksgiving that when somebody needs something, they give freely of what they have. They are generous. And finally, lastly, Sheep that are on the right path are thirsty. Thirsty to be with the Good Shepherd. They'll do anything to be there. The alternative to that is to be led astray by what Newton calls the world and its poor toys. I think that's a fantastic phrase. Sheep that are in the wrong direction are attracted by the world and its poor toys. What are some of those poor toys floating around right now out there? Power, wealth, alcohol, drugs. I'll tell you the one that's beating up a lot of people right now because it's coming across the internet and everybody thinks they can be private with it. That's pornography. Pornography is one of the world's poor toys. And if we're following after that stuff, they can actually, as we begin to indulge in it, we think we have control over it, but very quickly it begins to take control of us. We become its slave. The world's 
tortoise and slave us and 